Hello stars, my name is Blue and today we are lost in Morgan and Shadow. I rewatched my last video on this and I realized I said Morgan in the shadow. <laughs> it doesn't matter, we left off on Capella 3-8. So maybe this time I won't be coughing up a storm when I read it. Let's go! <clears throat> the mutiny is what carried Laporte from the middle to the end. The Alliance killed the Federation's best soldiers. It battered the Federation into political surrender. But it never beat Nagiri. It never beat Laporte. When the peace negotiations began, Laporte flew her re-armed Uriel from post to distant post, rallying the Federation's dying strength for the death ride to Capella. Dozens of ships, hundreds of pilots, answering to Naomi Morgan Laporte, the last ace the one who wouldn't let the fire go out. Laporte airbrushed the suggestion of a raven on her fighter. Its claws were bloody. There is armor in its jaw. She asked Sims to ride in her back seat as she went to raise mutiny. A couple undead soldiers flying the mutiny flag, she joked. Like a buddy cop thing. But Sims looked away and Laporte thought, what am I doing? How can I ask her to light this war back up? To be the spark that escalates it from atrocity to apocalypse. The war took her skin and melted the inside of her bones. It ripped out the lining in her guts. She can't even shit without fighting this, the war. I'm not mission capable yet, Sim said. And she looked at Laporte as if the war had taken one more vital thing from her. I hope the avionics work. I broke a lot of test pins in there. So, Laporte flew with... Al Alama instead. Al Alama from Nagari. The Federation government surrendered, but its fleet did not. They struck during treaty negotiations. Laporte's rebel Amada fought its way out of Seoul by shock and treachery, breached the blockades and serpentes, menaced the Alliance capital in Beta Aquileia. And as they did, Laporte's Nagari elite slipped into Vega, one wormhole away from their true goal. Capella. Admiral Steele's been chasing Laporte the whole way, trying to repair his only error. And here they are now, in Capella, at the end of the hunt. Laporte plunging towards the black hole in her little Uriel, and Steele's titanic Atreus plunging after her. The Uriel's electronic warfare systems make a deep, frightened sound. Laporte's helmet taps at her chins and says, Vampire Aspect Steamray, SSM EOS. Notch 000x000, 20 plus. It'll be missiles, then. A fuck ton of missiles. If he turned around now, with all of Atreus' fuel still coiled up in her engines, still could probably stop his fall. Claw his way into a hover above the black hole and then make a grueling climb up to the wormhole in safety. But he's accelerating chasing Laporte, risking himself and his entire crew to kill her. Laporte opens up a comm channel, aims it downward into the dark. She has aliens here, if they can be made to understand the danger. Ken, she sends, it's me. Don't keep me waiting, old man. That's why she's come here, to the singularity, to the tomb of Capella, because the nemesis made it just as they made her. Nagari to Ten. Ken is a dream of Laporte's. Laporte's dreams are not entirely her own. Ken happened long before the Alliance rebuilt the wormhole, long before the war. She was six years old, playing in the yard. Her parents had a house in Tyndale, part of Dar es Salaam, where they worked on heavy trains, moving cargo from the Indian Ocean all across Tanzania. Her father was a reserve pilot and her mother was an arbitrage. Little Naomi, left to self-direct education, was the Ubuntu preference for the young, spent her days building a model train system in the dirt between her water garden and her ant battle arena. But the ants would not stay in the battle arena. Not even a little. They kept foraying into the train system. No matter how many of them Naomi primitively delimbed. 
Ken suggested she consider the broader logic of driving ants. Ken often gave Naomi advice. Her parents were very proud that little Naomi had actualized such a useful inner friend. After an exhaustive survey of her territories, Naomi discovered the problem. There was a rival ant colony north of the water garden. Two groups, the two groups had fallen to war. She studied up on ant diplomacy, complaining into her phone, and concluded there was no florist solution. The colonies would compete for hegemony over all available resources. Unless one side achieved a sweet victory, lives and labor would be lost on the war. An attritional stalemate could ruin them both. She uncurled the garden hose and drowned the northern colony. The choice was simple, in that it was easy. It only depended on one thing. She knew and loved the ants in the south of the yard. She cared nothing for the ants in the north. There was no distinction between them. When you are a monster, as Laporte certainly is, you have to cling to the things you love. The ligatures that connect you to the rest of humanity. If you lose them, you may whirl away. Sims 3-9 Laporte didn't understand the Ken dream until she joined Nagari. That's the beginning. What the Alliance asked the Federation is what the woman named Al Alama asked Laporte. She was a tall woman with gunmetal implants in place of her eyes. She gave Laporte a choice. Stay with Sims as she fights the radiation poisoning, or come with me and try to win the war. The medics are coming, she said. You can stay with your captain until she dies, or until she doesn't. You'll make no difference. None of your talents or capabilities will contribute to her battle. Laporte is a wingman. She never leaves her wing leader. Or you can come with me. I'm with the Black Ops unit. Special moral environment. Nagari. You know we're losing this war. You know we need you. Except when necessary to complete the mission. And Laporte thought, if she lives, if she wakes up, I want to be able to say, Hey boss, we've won. I took care of everything for you. Did you have a good vacation? So Laporte took Al Alama by her tactical gloves and went with her out of the sweltering briefing room, out of the dying ship where everyone's sweat was hot enough to leave red radiation burns, where their marrow rotted inside their neutron salted bones. And that was how she joined Nagari. Nagari 310. Nagari, a committee of monsters, a federation of sharks, shaved skull operators cooking lamb when the naked coil of their frigates heat sinks. All veterans, not one in uniform. There are real psychological differences between federation and alliance citizens. Fifty years of sealed prosperity and soul gave birth to a generation of humans who are very good at living but very bad at killing. That's why the Federation, for all its social economic might, is losing the war. That's why Laporte thinks the Alliance chose war over peace. They could never win the peace, and they were built for victory. But Laporte isn't a good Federation citizen. No, oh, that's what Sims told her in the radiation cooked parley. You are a killer. You need no reason and no hate. It's just you. And that's why you'll be fine without me. And Sims was right. Laporte has an instinct for violence. And there are others like her, gathered under the mantle of Federation Black Ops, where the terrain of their violence exceeds far beyond the battlefield. This is your first mission, Al Alima briefs her in the back of the mess kitchen as they inventory the remainders. Cumin and cinnamon and allspice blown down over them. But the stink of ozone is stronger. Al Alama's eyes are sensors and projectors. They sketch visions for Laporte by scratching her eyes with particle beams. You will infiltrate an Alliance personal convoy carrying non-combatant contractors. 
dental and culinary services for rear area bases. When Laporte blinks, and the image is left where Al Alama's eyes don't fade. You will deploy a neutron weapon against the dormitory ships. Leave no survivors. Laporte imagines Sims asking. What is the military rationale for this strike, sir? She vows to ask after the mission. She vows to get good data on the mission effects. She used to keep a kill tally. One strike for each fighter she shot down. One chance to preen and brag for boss. She sleeps with a cable in her skull. And she dreams about the strike over and over. When she flies it, it feels like a dream too. The neutron weapon makes no light or sound except the shrieking rad warnings in her cockpit. She comes home to back slaps and fist bumps and moon shines from the still. The objective is atrocity, Al Alama tells her when she asks. The Nagari analyst wears a baggy gray jumpsuit, indifferent to rank or physical presence. The Alliance uses statistical modeling to predict our tactics. They've learned we obey a set of moral guidelines. The only way to confound their presidents is to introduce noise. Noise. Killing all those dentists with radiation was noise. When Sims was irradiated, she was very quiet. Laporte stopped spicing her food. She dresses in stark, self-washing jumpsuits. She showers cold. The other operators are happy monsters, full of gossip and tall tales, not shy about talking, shop, or sex. Laporte touches no one. She doesn't talk about her missions. And Jim in the simulator. She is iconic and dependable, but she never asks for anything. She practices self-denial. One of the other operators, Europa, born and silver-haired, comes after Laporte for reasons either carnal or tactical. The closest she gets to intimacy of one sort or another is when she says, You act like you're a monk. Monks give up stuff they like, man. Monks deny their pleasures. That's right. Monsters shouldn't be warm. They shouldn't have fun. Being a monster should feel like it cost. But then the silver woman grins at Laporte. And I know you grin and says, So when you pretend you hate work, I know what that means. I know what's up. Laporte flies nose jobs for months. False flags, political assassinations, bycatch enhancement, straight up terrorism. She has to round her kill tally to the nearest thousand. She has one of her teeth replaced by an armor transponder, so that someone will know she dies even if her body's vaporized. Sims would not be proud. Sims fought a war against an invading army, and she hated the fuck out of them, but she had rules. Nagari is anti-rule, strategically immoral. Is this her whole purpose now? Trying to buy the Federation a few extra months through the exercise of atrocity? Missions that violate every tenet of Ubuntu and civilized conflict? It's war, Sims once said. In war, monsters won. Laporte gathers that thought and buckles it around herself. For want of Sims, for want of victory. Is she fighting because victory might mean seeing Sims again? Imagine that. Imagine saying, hey boss, you're alive. I've neutron bombed a few thousand dentists and we won the war. Can I buy you a drink? Sims 4-9. Back in the middle, in the story that moves Laporte from Nagiri to the black hole. Her last chance to stay human. It's not true, Laporte tells Sims. They finish rearming all the fighters breaking the ceasefire lock. This is the lean time between the surrender and the mutiny, when the Federation surviving fleet lurks in the cold on the edge of the solar system, a fateful dog cast out and gone feral, waiting for Laporte and Nagiri to rouse them to revenge. 
What's not true? Sims ask. She pokes the fire with her cooking mitt. They have a trash fire going on the Ares hangar deck. Warships are good at coping with internal fires and very bad at serving as long-time habitats. They grew some chicken in the medical tissue loom, and now they're burning trash under a plate of thermal conductor in hopes of making chicken curry. That monsters win, Laporte says. The chicken pops and sputters grease. Sims laughs, and Laporte, thinking of dead cells slogging un- apart under radiation, shudders. Her transponder tooth left over from Nagari work is cold under her tongue. In the end, actually, monsters tend to lose, and that's much worse. What do you mean? Sims eyes her up. Sims is still exploring Laporte's new crazy side, separate, in her practical mind, from Laporte's old crazy side, before their long, radiation-cooked severance. Is this something from your Nagiri drug trips? Cosmic inside plucked from the void? Yeah, Laporte says, remembering the surgical theater. The feeling of cold indiogen slurry pumping into her skull, where they discovered the truth about Ken. I wish you'd been there, but I was there, Sim says, stirring the fire. The thermal conductor is a cheerful cherry hot color, and Sims hums as she works like she's trying to be casual about how much she cares for the idea. The possibility that she was out there, hoping Laporte win, even as she was built to a tearage rig with her bones melting out through needle tubes. I was in your thoughts, wasn't I? Isn't that what kept you alive? Why would she be so happy about this, about helping Laporte be a good monster, and then, just a day later, refuse to fly with Laporte in the mutiny? Why? And I'm gonna stop here. Cause the coughs are back. That's it for today, stars. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already to join our wonderful galaxy. Comment down below and I'll get back to you in some way or another. And I'll see you for our next adventure. Remember, we're all made of the same cosmic dust, so be nice. Kate, love you. Bye!